Good morning, John. It's Friday. This time, last week, and this is a little hard to believe considering the weather we're having here in Missoula right now, I was pulling out of Port Everglades on a beautiful sunny evening in a boat. And let's be honest, it wasn't really a boat. Technically, it was a ship. More technically, it was a 150,000 ton, 240 foot tall, 1,111 foot long, 183 foot wide floating luxury hotel with a climbing wall and a basketball court and mini golf and a Johnny Rockets and four swimming pools and precariously placed hot tubs and several beautiful performance venues in an arcade and a beautiful dining room and a casino and weird big red dogs in a mall and a giant cake and freaking ice skating rinks. A ship that burns 8,000 gallons of fuel per hour, which it uses not just to power the engines, but to distill seawater for us to surf on, power over a dozen elevators, keep the ice cold and the hot tubs hot. While environmentalist Hank is rebelling against the very existence of this thing, scientist Hank wants to know, how does this work? How on earth was it ever even created in the first place? The massive technological and logistical inputs required to keep it moving and floating and safe and happy. The goal, in fact, seemed to be for us to just completely forget that we were on a ship at all. Best to just imagine that you're in a quite nice entertainment venue that just happens to be experiencing the longest, most laid-back earthquake of all time. So I was on this ship for the fourth annual Joko Cruise Crazy, a floating nerd adventure featuring semi-celebrity nerds like John Hodgman, Peter Sagal, John Scalzi, Pomplamoose, Molly Lewis, the Double Clicks, Paul and Storm, Paul F. Tompkins, Grant Imahara, Will Wheaton, me, and of course Jonathan Colton, the Joko of Joko Cruise Crazy. It was pretty clear from day one that the biggest advantage of being on this cruise was not all the luxury amenities and not the free room service and not never being more than 12 feet away from a hot tub. It was being locked on a boat with cool people with no escape except for watery oblivion. Every day John Hodgman sat in a hot tub for two hours answering questions. I got exposed to talents I never knew existed, got to meet my idols, got to hang out with a bunch of awesome nerd fighters. And that's what all the people on the cruise were there for. Yeah, we stopped in Caribbean islands and swam with stingrays and snorkeled and went on the longest zip line over water in the world and saw this goat chewing cud on a grave in Jamaica. And yes, those were cool experiences, but it occurs to me that the real value of this somewhat monstrous technological marvel is to give us a kind of ancient simplified life. A small community where you can walk everywhere, seeing the same people every day, people that share your values and interests and passions and experiences. A place to be foolish and comfortable and joyful and proud, and somehow these days we require an awful lot of complexity to get back to simplicity. Now I know that cities are valuable, and that the internet is lovely, and we can't live that sort of insular life every day, but I'll tell you what, six days didn't even feel like long enough. Does it have to be on a boat that consumes a gallon of gas every 12 feet? Maybe not, but I don't know how else to pull it off. I will be thinking about that, though. I'll also be thinking about sunshine. Because this is a bunch of balls. John, I'll, oh my god. I can't even go there. This is just a lake now. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.